I am Savage Jim and I am doing this review on this aftermarket receiver for the PS90 rifles. This particular one is the FN90 receiver and this one happens to be a tri-rail version. The standard FN90 receiver of course omits the side rails. It only has the 12 lug upper Picatinny rail. With the tri-rail ones you do get the optional side mounts already included with the receiver and each of the mount is a four lug Picatinny and they're secured on by these hex screws on both sides. When you purchase the receiver and it is mailed to your FFL dealer for pickup the FN90 receiver is completely bare and devoid of any equipment and accessories to make it function. You have to move the barrel the charging spring, charging handle, and takedown button onto the FN90 receiver to make it a functional receiver. This one is ready to go and install onto the rifle and ready to shoot. I've installed a Burris reflex sight on the top. I left it on for the sole reason that I already have it sighted in where I want it and I don't want to mess with it anymore. The receiver, as I mentioned, is CNC machined and it is CNC'd from a 6061 aluminum block and this is all black anodized. The receiver, bare with no equipment, nothing on it, comes to you shipped 14.8 ounces according to the FN website information. On the side of the receiver is engraved Imperial Arms Company, Plainfield, Illinois with the caliber 5.7 by 28. To date the PS90 is only chambered for 5.7 by 28. However, there are some aftermarket companies such as CMMG, I believe, which offer kits to convert your PS90 to fire 22 LR. If you look at the FN90 receiver very closely and you just simply go over every detail, you will notice that everything is very precisely machined and not just for function purposes but also for cosmetic purposes. It's just a very beautiful receiver. Compared to the stock FNH receiver, the PS90 receiver, it is cast aluminum and the precision as far as cosmetics it really lacks. Now don't get me wrong, there is absolutely nothing wrong with the cast aluminum receiver. FNH knows what they're doing and the stock cast aluminum receiver functions very well even with its cosmetic flaws there is absolutely nothing wrong with the functioning as far as firing the rifle but one attention that that will be you, you will be drawn to immediately is this portion of the back end of this receiver rail you will see where this meets the stock there's this ugly space and that's typical for virtually all PS90 rifles with the cast aluminum receiver. I don't know if FNH ever uh, ca cast their receivers to be more precise to eliminate that space. With the FN90, that space is virtually eliminated. Yeah, there's a bit of space over there, but that's just a functional clearance but it's very uniform and it goes it goes effectively uh, beautifully with the rifle stock doing a side-by-side -side comparison of the stock PS90 receiver versus the FN90 receiver the very first thing you will notice is that the FN90 receiver the top rail is much lower than the stock PS90 rail. Now you can purchase aftermarket rails to fit the, the stock PS90 receiver and that will bring their, the uh, height down quite a bit. However, they will never match the, the height that the FN90 receiver could offer you. On the stock PS90 receiver, I don't know what the coating is, but I've had this for several years and put several thousand rounds through it. And over here in this uh, location where the front end of the magazine goes into, 
after so many installations of magazines, reloading with magazines, the whatever the coating is is starting to flake off. Now granted that uh, I've been using this receiver for several years for thousands of rounds and thus that's normal wear and tear and uh, this receiver has seen a lot of love at the range. I've only had the FN90 receiver for uh, several months and I've only put several hundred rounds through it and so far so good the anodizing has held up impeccably it still looks brand new as if it were fresh out of the box seamless and just like the just like the stock receiver it takes the magazine holds it down perfectly and locks it in very well now this being cast aluminum and this being machined aluminum out of 6061 aluminum billet of course the FN90 is going to have better strength than the cast aluminum receiver as I already mentioned the cast aluminum receiver there's absolutely nothing wrong with it FNH knows what they're doing and going with cast aluminum it didn't have to be ultra strong but regardless the FM90 receiver being 6061 billet machined it is a superior strength aluminum receiver this is what the FM90 receiver looks like on a fully assembled and functional PS90 I kept the full length barrel and a flash hider so that my rifle still retains and meets the NFA legal standards I didn't want to miss with an SBR and SBR tax stamp. I want to go over on the first step to taking off the barrel which is the, uh, the very first thing you need to do before you could take anything out of the re old receiver and transfer it to your new receiver. The first thing you need to do is drill out a pin which locks the shroud and flash hider against the barrel. Without, without doing that it is not possible to uninstall the old barrel and equipment from your old receiver and move it to your new receiver. The proper way to do that is with a drill press and cross slide vise. You use the cross slide vise to align the barrel and the, the hole that, that, that where, the, where the blind pin is located in perfectly underneath the, the drill bit so that you could drill it out in one go. I messed up on this. I attempted to do this with a hand drill and uh, my skill with hand tools is extremely horrible so I made this god awful mess. So to prevent from that happening unless you're extremely skilled, or I, I know there are people that are very skilled with, with hand tools and they could work wonders with hand tools. I am not one of them. But if you want the precision, or, or you're just a noob altogether, a drill press with cross-slide vise is a must for this operation.